This is Planned Parenthood's worst nightmare. A young girl confronts the article in Teen Vogue magazine talking about how to support your friend after a post-abortion. Take a look. I think about this, you're looking, I don't know if you saw the March for Life, we had a program where we showed the, the March for Life. There was over 300,000 in 2010 people that showed up in Washington, D.C. Uh, to be able to say, you know, we stand for life and uh, we pro-life. The interesting thing about that was there were young folks. Now they reported it as we talked about, the, the biased media reported it as, you know, that they were old folks and, you know, Christian conservatives and they all had gray hair. But the truth is, there were young people. We, taught, we had students from Liberty University and from all around the, the nation that were there that we interviewed and we showed. But listen, this is a young teenager. Her name is Autumn. And she read in Teen Vogue magazine. Now there's a magazine called Vogue, you know, I guess for adults or whatever, but Teen Vogue, it's focused for teenagers. And she was shocked what she read. And so here is their worst nightmare, Planned Parenthood and people that are for, for pro-abortion. This is their worst nightmare. What? young people, young girls standing up for life. Let's join Autumn right now. Hello, my name is Autumn and I'm 16. I would like to talk to you about an article recently posted by Teen Vogue called, What to Get a Friend Post-Abortion. And since I'm a teen, this was directed towards me and I would like to respond. The point of the article was to make the situation seem as lighthearted and nonchalant as possible in order to convince girls my age that abortion is no big deal. Well, we need to clarify one thing first. Abortion is a big deal, a very big deal. And to say it is not is simply feeding us a lie. Right off the bat, Teen Vogue said, quote, look, making this decision is never simple and having to make it as a teenager is more than a little terrifying but it shouldn't have to be so scary, unquote. Okay, which is it? Is it more than a little terrifying or is it not so scary? You can't have it both ways. It's one or the other. So the article said it doesn't have to be so scary, but I think we can all agree abortion is scary. No one skips into that room as if they're getting their hair highlighted or their nails painted. And just for the record, the thought of going into a room and having my baby surgically removed from my body is both terrifying and scary. And none of these gifts would make me feel better. And if they did make me feel better, that would mean I need serious counseling. Teen Vogue, you should be held accountable for this disgusting and disrespectful article. You trivialized an issue that leaves millions of women struggling every day. Such a blasé approach hurts women who regret their abortions. It minimizes their pain. So let's go through a couple of the ideas for post-abortive girls provided by Teen Vogue. Gift number one, a funny movie. Let's look at what this is saying. We understand that you've had a rough day, so here's a funny movie to get your mind off of it. You know when this would be appropriate? after your friend got their wisdom teeth taken out, not after they've had an abortion. How offensive to think a comedy would be a good antidote for the pain your friend might be feeling. Number two, underwear that you can rock after your abortion. Now this one is pretty unbelievable, so I'm going to read a part of the article for you. Quote, if you haven't already heard about Think's underwear, then I'm about to rock yo world. These revolutionary panties allow you to free bleed like our foremothers wished they could. Technically, they're made for your period, but that's no reason not to rock them for your post-abortion woes, especially because there will be blood." Unquote. Do I even need to explain why this is so deplorable? The language and flippant tone is appalling. Who would even consider rocking underwear after experiencing an abortion? Yes, there will be blood, because that's what happens after a pregnancy ends and it's traumatizing. And cool underwear won't fix it or make it all better. Number three, angry uterus heating pad. This is a heating pad shaped as a uterus with an angry, mad face on it. Teen Vogue said, quote, likely worse than any period symptoms you've ever experienced. You'll love it. 
It's like two throbbing hot balls of lead are trying to escape your body, all while your stomach contracts over and over again. Huzzah! Unquote. Remember in the beginning of the article when they said abortion doesn't have to be so scary? Well, this sounds pretty scary to me. A creepy little gag gift is not going to counteract the feelings of hot lead balls escaping your body. Number four, girl power hat. Is this really the time for that? I just ended my baby's life. Girl power. Are they insinuating that girls who celebrate their abortions understand girl power more than girls who regret them or refuse to have them? And by the way, how many aborted babies have been girls? What about their rights? When do girls begin to have power? And how powerful do you have to be to destroy the most helpless of people? To me, abortion seems like the opposite of girl power. It is the most invasive and degrading thing that could happen to a girl. And my version of girl power is knowing that I am valuable and precious. I am grateful I was allowed to live and I want all girls and boys to have that same right. This is a human rights issue, not a girl power movement. Number five, F uterus pin. Yep, you heard that right, an F uterus pin. I see a hidden motive here. They mentioned that this would be an armor in which to defend yourself against insensitive jerks asking about why you've had an abortion. One, how would they even know you've had an abortion? I guess unless you're wearing an F uterus pin. And two, some of the proceeds go to Planned Parenthood. So I think the motive here is to support Planned Parenthood rather than being there for your friend. Six, become an abortion clinic escort. In no way are children qualified to escort someone into a clinic to have an abortion. Teen Vogue, are you really encouraging teens to go be abortion escorts? Do you really think we, minors, have the tools to deal with that kind of pressure on an ongoing basis? Number seven, a needlepoint that reads, we won't go back. I'm only 16 and know that guilt follows women for years after abortions. And I also know a cross stitch isn't going to change that. But this article said, quote, there is nothing to be ashamed of or feel guilty about. If girls are being told this, no wonder our culture has become so desensitized to the idea of taking the life of a baby. It's only after it happens and the guilt plagues them and the depression drags them down that they look at the cross stitch on the wall that their friend gave them and think, I actually wish I could go back. But sadly, by then it's too late and the we won't go back turns into we can't go back, which unfortunately is something women only realize after they've had an abortion. This article made light of a heart-wrenching issue. Trivializing abortion doesn't do anyone any good. Joking about it is incredibly offensive to all involved. Do you know what I wanna tell girls who've had abortions? I want them to know that there are organizations out there that will help them where they're at. There are places that will provide counseling, such as Rachel's Vineyard, a safe place to renew, rebuild, and redeem hearts broken by abortion. The National Hotline for Abortion Recovery is 866-482-LIFE. And for local pregnancy resource centers in your area, visit healingafter.com and enter your zip code. And for those of you in high school and college, you can join me and get involved in Students for Life. This is a wonderful way for us young people to be involved in the pro-life movement. If you know someone who has had an abortion, don't buy them a gag gift and disguise it as a celebration. Treat it for what it is, a terrible loss. Go sit with her in her grief, 
pray for her, remind her of God's redemption, and comfort her in her suffering. Offer your friendship and promise to help her find healing. No matter what stance you have on abortion, it should never be treated with such nonchalance as this piece did. And if you are considering an abortion, remember, circumstances change. You won't always feel this afraid, and there are so many options and resources for you, such as adoption. My sister is adopted, and I cannot imagine my life without her. Her life is a gift to us. You have the power to choose life. And where there is life, there is always hope. That is so powerful, Autumn. You did an excellent job. I want to encourage you to, to stand up with these young folks who are saying, listen, you know, we're not for taking the life of a child. We are for ending abortion. Thank you for watching VFN TV. If you like this video, give us a thumbs up. Also, if you want to see more videos like this, subscribe. You know, a lot of people want to abide with the Lord, but they just don't have a plan to do it. You can request that plan today at iabide.org. Don't forget you can join us 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Download our app and sign up for our newsletter, The Torch, at vfntv.com.